All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Gen 716 back here again. And today, I've got to talk to you guys about Tua Tungvaloa declaring for the NFL Draft. This is something that we that we knew. Um, we all knew that this was going to happen at some point. Uh, maybe there were some hints that maybe he would stay, but overall wise, you know, I think we all knew in our hearts that he was going to go to the NFL Draft. And really, he had no choice. I, I think that um, as far as uh, the risk, um, I, I just, if he would have came back, you know, been our, you know, become our starting quarterback, and he gets hurt again. His draft stock falls. It, it, I think that draft it, it just plummets, man. That that draft stock definitely plummets, and uh, especially that, especially it could be, a, you know, who knows? He he could fall on his hip again, and it, it can be a career-ending injury. I think that going to the NFL draft was the smart decision. Um, you know, do I think he'll start a, right away? No, I don't think so, because I, you know, suffering an injury like the way he did that takes a lot of time. To recover from so I think that he could take that Jalen Smith approach where he sits out for about a year waits so we can get close to 100 percent and uh, I think he'll come back do I think he'll be the same player like he was at Alabama no I don't think he'll become the same player um, but you know it doesn't mean that you're going to be a bad player I mean look, again Jalen Smith had a a very similar injury as far as the significance of his NFL career uh, being ended and Jalen Smith is one of the you know uh, he sits out a year, and now he's one of the best linebackers in the league. Um, I mean, my, like I said, miraculously, and, and thanks to the grace of God, um, Jalen Smith is not playing football again. He's still playing at a high level, but he's not the same player he was at Notre Dame. He's not. A, he's, he's not. He's not that same dominant Lawrence Taylor type of player that everyone thought he would be coming out of Notre Dame. But he's still a really good linebacker. So, um, hopefully, Tua. Um, hopefully, I think maybe. Um, he'll slip. I don't think. I don't think he's gonna slip far. He. he I think he's probably gonna be a top fifteen, top twenty pick. I think one team will definitely gamble on him. It only takes one team to fall in love with him, and uh, they'll take him. Um, whether if that's potentially the Chargers, maybe the Patriots at thirty at number thirty two. If he slips that far, um, I, I just you know, the Saints with Drew Brees. Um, I you know there are a lot of teams out there that definitely are in need of a quarterback, and uh, you know um, I think that. Honestly, if he does slip, I think going in those late rounds where he where he can sit behind a mature, experienced quarterback that's had success in the NFL, I think that would definitely benefit Tua Tungvaloa um, compared to going to a bad team like the Cincinnati Bengals. So I think for in the long term wise, that might be good for his career. But um, as far as what he's done for the University of Alabama, there's no question about it, guys. He's one of the greatest players to ever grace the uniform, and if not. Maybe the, you know, there's no question. He's the greatest quarterback that's ever played Alabama. That's for damn sure. He is one of the greatest quarter, uh, one of the greatest all around Alabama players that's ever graced um, the uniform, man. Um, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of greats out there, man. A lot of greats um, that, you know, you, you know, you can't sit here and say that he is. I'm, but, but I don't know. You, you might have an argument for it. I mean, you know, I think the best Alabama player of all time is Derek Thomas. Uh, just I, Derek Thomas is a, was a different breed compared to everybody else, but that's just my opinion. But um, as far as the quarterback position, there's no question he's the he's the best ever grace the uniform. And you know, one thing that even though we all know that Tua he did not end the way it was supposed to be, um, right? There was some heartache. It started off really great and it ended in heartache with that injury. But I think that Tua, you know, I think he's opened the door, especially for the fact that we could see a lot more quarterbacks exactly like Tua. Maybe not his talent, but as far as, you know, guys that that can throw the ball, you know, maybe getting 3,500 to 4,000 yards, um, you know, getting over 35, 40 touchdowns. As far as getting those big, you know, big type of stat guys, maybe, you know, our off, especially evolutionizing our offense, I think Tua, the impact that Tua and uh, the players that were here with them, you know, the impact that those guys have had is, man, I, I can't say that enough, man, because our offense... You know, we're in an era now where the offense is more dominant compared to the defense, right? Before, we used to have, you know, these um, game-managing type of quarterbacks like Greg McElroy and A.J. McCarron. And, of course, there's John Parker Wilson. And, you know, it, the list goes on and on. But, you know, with Tua and what he's done with the offense, he's changed. He's evolutionized our offense to what we are. I mean, we're now one of the most dominant offenses in, in recent memory. And it's thanks to Tua and the personnel and, and, and the coaching staff that was surrounding him, but especially for Tua Tungavaloa. Um, and now you look at other quarterbacks like Bryce Young, who's the number one, who's the, who's the number one quarterback in the country coming in. Um, you see how Mac Jones is starting to play thanks to the evolution um, of our offense with Mike Lasley and, and, and Steve Sarkeesian. You're starting to see how 
Uh, Mac Jones is now playing. Even though that he's not as talented, he's still playing at a really, really high level. So I think that Tua, as far as his impact and the legacy that he left here, um, it goes far beyond than uh, his three years. It, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to have an impact on Alabama, I think, for a very, very long time. And uh, I just can't thank Tua and uh, his family enough for what they've a- what they've been able to do here over the last three years. Um, so um, it's tough losing a quarterback. You know, co- co- you know, quarterbacks like Jalen Hurts and Tua Tungvaloa. Those are legends, and those are guys that should that should get statues right away. But um, at the end of the day, for Tua Tungvaloa, man, uh, I think the the you you just can't skip out an opportunity, especially coming off the injury that you are. I think you you just can't skip off an opportunity like this. And uh, this was, in my opinion, a no-brainer for Tua Tungvaloa. Um, if he would have never got hurt, I think he would have stayed, honestly. If he never would have got hurt or suffered that serious injury, I honestly believe that he would have stayed. But this was just a no-brainer for him. I think he literally had no choice but to go to the NFL. And, I, again, I just can't be thankful enough, especially for Thai Nation, um, of just what Tua Tungvaloa and his family has done for the Alabama community over for the last three years. So, once again, thank you, Tua Tungvaloa. Thank you to the Tongue of Aloha family uh, for what you guys are able to do. Uh, you know, the Thai family definitely appreciates what you've been able to do. Now, go ahead to the NFL, man. Get your money. And, uh, man, have a long and successful career. Um, you always be an Alabama legend. And uh, like I said, guys, just can't just can't thank him enough and his family enough for what they've been able to do here. So, anyway, guys, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I have more Bama coverage later on. So, uh, make sure you guys stay tuned to that. And that's all I got. So, anyway, this is Gen716. Catch you guys later. Rotad.